welcome everyone. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek, and today we're going to be going over a textbook, by the book, perfect example of velocity banking to help you pay off debt, increase cash flow, lower expenses, raise your credit score, all using your own income so that you can, what? Build a legacy, build that kingdom, create tax-free assets so you can live the life you want to live and achieve financial freedom. Without any further ado, let's jump into the case here. We have a individual, 55 years old, married. The goal for them is to invest in multifamily real estate. That's what they want to do. It's what they want to get done. All right. So here are our what four major numbers. Income is $6,600. Expenses total, everything outgoing, $2,800. Total debt, $56,500. My cash flow, right off the bat, it's rocking and rolling. $3,800. And I've got my debt tool, which is a home equity line of credit for $30,000. Not bad at all. This person gets paid bi-weekly on the 10th and the 25th of every month. Current balance on their HELOC is $15,500. We are starting Velocity Banking, working with me, client on the board at the end of august 2019 so really technically we're gonna get this thing rock and rolling september is when we get our engines rolling here a key number i want you to remember is nineteen thousand eight hundred dollars this is two-thirds of what my line of credit is that's the number i'm going to use conservatively to wipe out all his debt all right so to begin with since i already have an existing balance on the heloc of 15,500, we're gonna do velocity banking on the HELOC before we start tackling other debts. We need to bring that HELOC balance down so that we can get a nice chunk to uh, get, our, get our systems flowing, okay? So 15,500 income goes in, okay? The blue means money's going in. The red means money's coming out. Where does it go out to? goes from your HELOC to your checking account. Checking account pays your bills, all right? Pretty simple. So 66 going in, 28 coming out. At the end of September, throughout 30 days, my balance should be somewhere around 11,700 bucks, okay? And I go another month, balance at the end of October should be somewhere around 7,900. Income going in, expenses coming out. Nothing changes. After you, we're, we're focusing right now on just eliminating the HELOC balance, okay? So end of November, my balance drops to $4,100, all right? Now here's where it gets interesting and a little bit fun. If you are personally in a position where you have good income, low expenses, high cash flow, and a relatively large debt tool or line of credit is... I'm not going to wait until you hit zero on the line of credit. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and make a chunk. All right. So when you take this number and that number, you add it up together, it's somewhere around this number right here, key number, right? I'm not going to really breach this number on the HELOC. So I'm going to make a $15,000 chunk at his mortgage. Okay. We've got a mortgage over here. The balance on it is $35K. That's how much he owes, and the monthly payment is $750. So he doesn't have that many years left on it. Still got a while to go, but we're going to speed this bad boy up. All right? So 15 k we're going to make that chunk. It's going to lower the balance on the mortgage. It's going to bring my balance back up on the HELOC to somewhere around $19,100. Okay? By doing this move alone, I save tons of interest over here. I pay nothing over here. Whatever interest I pay over here came over there. Got it? So I'm offsetting my borrowing costs just by doing that. Now to make matters even better, I'm going to dump all my income and I'm going to keep this thing going. $6,600 goes into the line of credit. $2,050 comes out. Whoa, what happened there? Aren't my expenses 28? Well, here, listen. When I make a 15K chunk in any month that I'm in, part of that chunk is going to go towards whatever debt I'm tackling. So for the month of December, 
okay, at the end of November going into December here, we're not going to have a mortgage payment. Therefore, my cash flow temporarily goes up 750 bucks for that one specific month. Not bad at all. So when I dump all income in, take expenses out, end of December, here's my balance, 14,550. We are on a roll. We went from 19 all the way down to 14,550. Not bad. One more month, January, stepping into 2020. All income goes in, expenses come out. For that month, my expenses will go back up to the 2,800, okay? So we're not making a chunk and then not having any payments for a few months. Only for the one month will I not have a payment, okay? So January, boom, balance drops to 10,750. February, 6,950. End of March, 3,150 bucks is my balance. Remember how I didn't go all the way to zero over here? Well, I'm not going to go to zero here. I'm going to make my chunk. All right. So end of March, beginning April, I'm going to make my second chunk. No matter what, my second chunk pays off the mortgage balance in full. What I did was the 3150 plus the 16650 equals that. So somewhere around this number should pay off the rest of my mortgage balance, right? So every month I'm paying $750 in the, uh, in the Velocity Banking months, right? So $750, $750, $750. More of that $750 every single month after making a chunk is most of that money is going to be going towards principal, all right? So my chunk will somewhere, you know, we'll find out when we get to the when we get to that point, but it'll be somewhere around sixteen, maybe seventeen thousand dollar chunk payment on that mortgage, gone. So mortgage gets paid off. Balance should be somewhere around nineteen thousand eight hundred on the HELOC. Mortgage is paid off. Expenses drop. So for the month of April, I got income going in, expenses coming out. Here's my balance at the end of April, 15,250. April 2020, we're on a roll. So April 2020, my mortgage is paid off. That's amazing. Do the math, how many months that was. That's pretty cool. Starting in September of 2019. Not bad at all. Now, direct your attention, top of the board. End of April going into May, 15,250 is my balance. Here's May's income, 66, expenses come out. 2050. Here we go. Here's my balance in June, 10,700. Not bad. So by the end of June, my balance will be at around 6,150 after I've dumped all my income and took out expenses. End of June, there's my balance. Beginning of July, here's the interesting part. Since the mortgage is now paid off, my balance is somewhere around 6,000. The only other debts I have left is two credit cards, totaling $6,800. So I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to go ahead and chunk that, pay that off completely. Another thing is that credit card was on zero interest for a little while. So we're going to pay off the card, not pay any interest over here, and shift the cash flow gain back to the line of credit. Okay. So once I pay off $6,800 off the credit card, I'm going to get a cash flow gain of $150. When I make the chunk, my balance goes up to 12950 in July. At the end of July, right, all income went in. Expenses are now $150 less from the previous month. So my balance will be somewhere around 8250 end of July. Now, technically, I'm debt-free from this number, right? Wiped out all that debt. The only thing I do now is zero out the line of credit and now I'll be completely done moving on to the next thing in my financial journey to create wealth and build my kingdom okay so income goes in expenses come out August three thousand five hundred fifty dollars by September or sooner I'll have nothing left so when you factor in the time that it takes to pay off the line, the HELOC, I have a potential to be debt-free in about 13 months or less. It's not bad at all. Now, 
when you compare it to the debt snowball method, conservatively speaking, you could probably, if you did not do velocity banking and all you did was send your 3,800 cash flow each and every month to your debt, this person would be debt free in about 15 to 16 months, maybe a little, maybe like another month or two because of interest. I didn't really calculate uh, interest too well in there, but I went conservative and I was like, you know what, 15 to 16 months, give or take. And same thing, their cash flow would be the same on Velocity Banking because we're paying off the same stuff. Now, not a huge difference in time frame. The reason behind that is because of the total amount of debt owed, right? We don't really have a whole lot of debt. Not only that, the debt is not too high on interest costs. Remember, his credit cards are at 0%. His home, majority of the debt really is the home. And for the most part, a lot of the, the interest has already been you know, uh, paid for in, in the initial years. So not a huge time lapse in terms of debt snowball versus velocity banking. Velocity banking does get done sooner, so that is the better choice. Now, what really makes the difference here is the leverage and ability that I have to work with once I am debt free. Here's where the major, major uh, deal breaker is when you're looking whether or not I should do debt snowball or velocity banking on my finances is this part right here. When I'm debt free doing velocity banking, understand that I did not lose my cash flow it's right there in the HELOC, right? That $30,000 HELOC, it's right there. I used the bank's money first initially, and then I paid myself back the cash flow so that once I'm debt free, I can use this cash flow to go do something with it, right? Whereas on the debt snowball side, if I did not have the HELOC to begin with, then I'm debt free the following month my only amount of cash flow I'll have to work with is 4,700. So it's gonna take me some months to actually save up the money to then think about what I wanna invest in, to then take action, to then you know, keep going on that way. Whereas if I already have this debt tool in place, this HELOC, not only can I use the 30K, but I can also increase that HELOC to 50,000 or even higher than that. And I can use that to invest in myself, in a business, in an opportunity to create wealth, right? So I get to go faster in that aspect. Now, in other scenarios that I've done, you'll see a drastic difference in terms of our debt timeline payoff because the debts are usually much higher and the interest rates are much higher. So when we're in when you're in a situation, right, and I'm talking to someone that has really good income, low expenses, high cash flow. If you have high cash flow and your debt's not that large, velocity banking can still work for you. You're not going to see a huge gain in the timeline because the interest has already been you kind of already paid for if you only have so much debt left, right? So in your situation, I would still use Velocity Banking. I would also have a game plan to figure out what am I going to do afterwards with the, with the leverage of my HELOC that I, that I have to work with, okay? So that's, what I, that's who I'm talking to right now in that aspect. Another thing I want to mention or uh, let you know is the credit access that you'll have. So your credit will be much higher, you'll have more leverage to work with. So that's another thing why I would go the velocity banking route. Debt snowball is good, right? It can work, no doubt, right? I'm not, not knocking it. It'll work. It's just that you have to restart when you're done, right? Whereas I can keep all my cash flow in the process, pay off all my debt, get done sooner, whether it's by a few months or a year, still, that's, that's, uh, you know, 
couple of mortgage payments less that I don't have to worry about and credit card payments. So there's that. And then my leverage capability. So I, I want to stress on those points right there when I get those questions of, you know, how, how much better is velocity banking over debt snowball or, you know, can this work for me if I'm a high income earner? Sure, velocity banking can definitely work for you, especially on the infinite banking side. So I'm gonna do a follow-up video to talk about velocity banking and infinite banking together, right? So I'm gonna do a scenario where I combine the two to then invest in multifamily real estate. Because this person on the board, that's his goal. It's his end game is to invest in real estate. He wants to get multifamily properties. Cool, that's awesome. Before he gets there, he's gonna need some money, whether it be other people's money, leverage, credit access. How am I gonna get access to credit leverage? By having good credit, okay? Well, Velocity Banking, Infinite Banking can help him get there a lot faster. And with Infinite Banking, we can not only invest in another vehicle, but we can also have our money to continue to work for us even while we're investing. And in fact, have that money grow for us tax-free. So we get both windows, both opportunities. So even when that goes down, I still have money working for me, which is great. So it's simply multiplying the same money. That's what Velocity Banking has over Debt Snowball, is that ability to use $1 more than once. I can use it two, three, four, five times over when I'm doing velocity banking and infinite banking. So stay tuned. I'm gonna do a follow-up video on this. Hope you liked it. Subscribe, like this video. Ask some questions in the comments below. Be happy to help you out. If you're ready to join my program, we got a velocity banking masterclass where this is all I'm gonna be doing. Just running numbers back to back, back to back, over and over again until you get it, okay? So you can check out my links in the description below. You can check out the programs that I have. I have opportunities at all different financial levels for you to start mastering your personal finances and build that kingdom. My name is Denzel. Have a wonderful day and God bless.